Dear friends, welcome to Who is Who in the Bible. It is a family prayer with the Redemptrist. Today we are looking at Saint Silas, also called Saint Silvanus, an early Christian prophet. Saint Silas, also called Saint Silvanus, is a missionary companion to Saint Paul, the Apostle. It is generally believed that he, Silas in Acts, and the Silvanus in 2 Corinthians and 1st and 2 Thessalonians and 1st Peter are the same. Acts 15.22 first mentions him as one of the leading men among the brethren. Let us pause for a prayer. Lord Jesus, you made Silas as an open-minded, believing, as Paul did, that Gentiles should be brought into the church. He was a gifted preacher, loyal traveling companion, and strong in his faith. Lord, as we learn more about this great saint, increase our faith so that we may become a witness to you. Dear friends, Silas is one of two prophets who encourage the faithful in Antioch. Paul takes Silas with him on the trip to the cities where he and Barnabas had established congregations. Compared with Barnabas, Silas is more an assistant than a partner. Still, as with Barnabas, what happens to Paul also happens to Silas. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. The jailer fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Silas was a bold missionary in the early church, a companion of the Apostle Paul and a loyal servant of Jesus Christ. Silas accompanied Paul on his missionary journey to the Gentiles and converted many to Christianity. He also may have served as a scribe delivering Peter's first letter to churches in Asia Minor. The first mention of Silas in the Bible describes him as a leader among the brothers. A bit later, he is called a prophet. Along with Judas Bersabas, he was sent from Jerusalem to accompany Paul and Barnabas to the church at Antioch, where they were to confirm the decisions of the Jerusalem Council. That decision, monumental at the time, said new converts to Christianity did not have to be circumcised. After that task was accomplished, a sharp dispute arose between Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas wanted to take Mark, John Mark, on a missionary journey. But Paul refused because Mark has deserted him in Pamphylia. Barnabas sailed to Cyprus with Mark. But Paul chose Silas and went on to Syria and Cilicia. The unexpected consequences was two missionary teams spreading the gospel twice as far. In Philippi, Paul cast a demon out of a female fortune teller that ruined the power of the fortune teller. Paul and Silas were severely beaten and cast into prison, their feet put in stocks. During the night, Paul and Silas 
were praying and singing hymns to God when an earthquake broke the doors open and everyone's chains fell off. Paul and Silas shared the gospel, converting the terrified jailer. When the magistrates learned about Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, the rulers were afraid because of the way they had treated them. They apologized and let the two men go. Silas and Paul traveled to Thessalonica, Berea and Corinth. Silas proved to be a key member of the missionary team along with Paul, Timothy and Luke. The name Silas may be derived from the Latin Silvan, meaning Woody. However, it is also a shortened form of Silvanus, which appears in some Bible translations. Some Bible scholars call him a Hellenistic Greek Jew, but others speculate Silas must have been a Hebrew to have risen so quickly in the Jerusalem church. As a Roman citizen, he enjoyed the same legal protections as St. Paul. A glimpse into Silas' character can be seen after he and Paul had been viciously beaten with rods at Philippi, then thrown into prison and locked in stocks. They prayed and sang hymns. A miraculous earthquake along with their fearless behavior, helped convert the jailer and his entire household. Unbelievers are always watching Christians. How we act influences them more than we realize. Silas showed us how to be an attractive representative of Jesus Christ. Silas was a prophet, Acts 15.32. In the first century, prophets were a part of the Lord's program for the church. The Holy Spirit revealed the mind of God to apostles and prophets, who in turn communicated his will to humans. The Bible says that prophets spoke messages of edification and exhortation and comfort, causing people to learn and be encouraged. Silas exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. It would be fair for each of us to ask ourselves, do I build up or do I tear down? Do I take an active interest in the spiritual development of my brothers and sisters in the Lord? Or do I just keep my distance. To exhort others, it takes effort and a positive disposition. We all need encouragement from time to time. Why not give encouragement to others? Silas patterned with uh, Paul in Acts 15.40. As the Bible says, in many instances, two are better than one. At time, Jesus and his uh, disciples out to work by two. Silas and Paul were a team. There was no boss among them. Both were willing co-workers with one another and with God. The Lord's cause is blessed today when faithful brethren partnered up to labor together like Paul and Silas did. Silas was persecuted with Paul. A number of years later, Paul reminded the brethren in the same city of Philippi that it is the way of Christians not only to believe in Jesus, but also to suffer for his sake. While some disciples desert the master when they encounter afflictions because of him and his word, others like Silas see suffering as a commitment to Jesus as a way of happiness, knowing they have an eternal reward. Silas prayed with Paul. They did so at the midnight hour 
in the prison in Philippi. Anyone would pray in that kind of circumstances. God calls on us to continue earnestly in prayer, not just approach his throne when we feel desperate. Devoted men like Silas and Paul would approach God in prayer when they faced great trials in their lives, but also when they had no life-threatening scenarios. It is a blessing to be able to call on our Heavenly Father at any hour from any location. And what a blessing to be able to pray with fellow saints. Silas praised God with Paul. They praised him in song in that same prison. Silas and Paul were a tough situation, a potentially deadly one. Yet, despite their chains, there is no indication that they blame God for their troubles. They did not feel sorry for themselves and they did not suggest that serving the Lord is not worth it. They stuck with it. Yes, our Lord is worthy of praise at all times regardless of where we find ourselves and regardless of the storms which we may be facing in our lives. The jailer in Philippi asked Paul and Silas, Sir, what must I do to be saved? The answer they gave him was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. They then proceeded to speak the word of the Lord to him and his family. As a result, the keeper of the prison and his family were baptized. Silas and Paul were beaten and imprisoned, but no one was able to stop them from proclaiming the good news about Jesus. According to church tradition, Silas was one of the 70 disciples sent out to Peria by the Lord Jesus around the time of Sukkoth in AD 29. Luke wrote of this event, but does not provide us with the names of these individuals. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Luke 10, 1. We have no way of confirming this tradition, but it is interesting to note, whenever Silas traveled on a mission trip, he always followed that two by two principle set forth by the Lord Jesus and had someone else with him. For example, Silas and Peter, Silas and Judas, Silas and Paul, or Silas and Timothy. The scripture is silent as to when and how Silas came to faith in the Lord Jesus as his Messiah and Savior. If the church tradition is correct that he was one of the 70, then Silas might have heard the gospel from the lips of the Lord Jesus himself and put his trust in Christ alone for his salvation during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said in one occasion, and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. We have a hint in Acts 15 of the role that Silas played in the formative years of the church in Jerusalem. Luke again writes with regards to the decision by the church council in AD 49, then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, 
namely Judas, who was also named Bersabbas and Silas. Leading men among the brethren. Notice two things about Judas and Silas. They were chosen men from within the church in Jerusalem, as well as leading men in the assembly. This indicates that Silas was actively involved in the work of the Lord in Jerusalem. The adjective used by Peter to describe Silas was faithful, 1 Peter 5.12. This was something that Lord Jesus prized in the believer, Matthew 25.14-30. Paul admonished the believers in Corinth to develop this characteristic in their own life. At one point in his life, Paul wrote that he thanked the Lord Jesus for giving him the power to live the Christian life. As a result of this, Jesus counted Paul faithful and put him in the ministry. This faithfulness was in sharp contrast to John Mark, who begged Barnabas and Paul on their first missionary journey. There is a bit of irony in Paul choosing Silas for the second missionary journey after Paul's uh, contention with uh, Barnabas over John Mark. Let us look at some of the reasons. Both Silas and uh, John Mark had been with Peter on his first missionary journey eight years prior. A few years later, John Mark left Paul and Barnabas at Perge when he found out they were going back to Galatia again. Scripture does not say why John Mark left, but we can surmise that something happened in Galatia during their missionary journey with Peter. That caused John Mark to hesitate at returning to the area. Silas had been through the same thing. Whatever it was that John Mark had been uh, through in Galatia, yet Silas was faithful and fearless. Everything John Mark was not. Perhaps Paul used this selection of Silas as a subtle way to prod John Mark to faithfulness. The second reason Paul chose Silas was that he was a fearless person. In the letter from the apostles and elders in Jerusalem, Judas and Silas are described as men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 15, 26. Unfortunately, we are not told how and when they risked their lives for sake of Christ. There are several instances of persecution of believers in Jerusalem recorded in the book of Acts. This raises an interesting possibility. Did Rabbi Saul, the Pharisee, threw Judas and Silas into prison? Now Silas would be working with the name with a man who at one time persecuted him. That would be a powerful testimony to the forgiveness Silas had for someone who had done him wrong. The third reason Paul chose Silas was that he was with Peter on his first missionary journey. So he knew the churches uh, of the circumcision in those locations and especially Galatia, more importantly, the churches knew Silas. The fourth reason Paul chose Silas was that Silas was exercising his spiritual gifts. Silas was a prophet with the gift of prophecy. This spiritual gift was the communication of God's word to his people. The prophet was to interpret and apply God's word to the life of the church. In the practical outworking of this in Antioch, Judas and Silas exhorted 
and strengthened the believers in that church. The fifth reason Paul chooses Silas was that he had the authoritative backing of the Jerusalem church. As has been mentioned before, Silas was a leading man in Jerusalem, possibly one of the 70, and an apostle. On this second missionary journey, Silas would report and confirm the letter from the Jerusalem council. In a sense, he would be the personal representative of the Jerusalem church and apostle and represented their authority when he delivered the decrees. The final reason Paul chose Silas was that he had Roman citizenship. Paul and Silas would plead their Roman citizenship if they were confronted by the perils of the Gentiles. On at least one occasion at Philippi, they had to do this where Timothy was at this point, uh, we are not told. We could suspect there was a wave of anti-Semitism caused by the decree of Claudius when he expelled the Jews from Rome. Paul and Silas were hauled before the magistrate by, by the honors of the slave girl with the accusation that this man, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs which are not lawful to us, being Romans, to receive or observe. It would also give them access to the aristocracy in Rome, Cornelius, for example. The ups and outs, if they could reach the wealthy people in the community, then perhaps they might open their homes for the church to meet in. For example, Priscilla and Aquila opened their homes in Rome. And likewise, uh, Gaius and in Corinth, these were people that Silas had an influence in their lives. Was Paul satisfied with his selection of Silas? Absolutely. Paul was satisfied with his uh, selection of Silas on the second missionary journey because Silas used his prophetic gift for the furtherance of the ministry in Galatia. He apparently was the one God used to prophesy about Timothy in Lystra. And First Timothy says, The charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the uh, prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience. Silas at Thessalonica. Paul was satisfied with his selection of Silas when they were ministering in Thessalonica because Silas was not a financial burden on the church in that city. When they wrote back to the church at Thessalonica, they reminded them, For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also. Devotedly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. We know that Paul, uh, Paul's secular occupation was that of a tent maker. But what Silas did, we are not told. Yet he engaged in secular employment in Thessalonica so as not to be a financial burden on the church. This strategy apparently paid off with much spiritual success in the city. Silas at Bira, Athens and Thessalonica. Paul was satisfied with his selection of Silas when they were 
ministering in beer because he could be trusted to symbolize a new church as well as carry a financial gift to Paul. Paul, Silas and Timothy found a very receptive audience in the synagogue at Beira. These Jews searched uh, the scriptures daily to see uh, where the scriptures said what Paul said. It said about the Lord Jesus. Unfortunately, some agitations from Thessalonica came and stirred up the people of uh, Beria. Paul was forced to leave and depart departed from uh, Athens. Silas and Timothy stayed in uh, Beria to stabilize the new church and helped to build it up. Paul was satisfied with his uh, decision to invite Silas with him because in Corinth <coughs> he was actively involved in the evangelistic outreach. They ministered in the city from AD 50 to 52. When Paul wrote back to the churches at Corinth, he reminds them that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus and Timothy. The three not only did evangelistic work in Corinth, they also uh, authored two epistles to the church in Thessalonica, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. In these two epistles, they tried to correct some doctrinal errors that had crept into the church concerning the return of Christ. Silas was a prophet and had a gift of prophecy, yet he was actively involved in evangelism and making disciples. He exercised his gift of prophecy to build up the body of Christ. But he shared the gospel and made disciples because it was a command from the Lord Jesus. This is the life of this great saint. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, you have chosen Silas as your good instrument of proclaiming the gospel. We may follow his example in proclaiming the gospel through our life, doing good to the people around us. We ask for this grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good night and God bless you.